Hey there, everybody, and welcome. This is Tevo DRC. Things are looking up. They're looking greater. They're looking farther because I've been he getting in and hearing the Lord more clearly, and I needed to because it was a whopper. I mean, a major whopper of an assault in the last five months, six months. Really, all this year, I've never needed so much faith and endurance to really keep my hope up and keep close to the Lord closer than ever. And now I'm finally broken through. It was a made into a made our new adventure, our new adventure. I'm not sure exactly how long I'll be up in Charlotte because you have to find the right mix of people without mixture and dysfunction, which are plentiful, more plentiful here than anywhere, thank God. That's why I like it. Really love it in ministry. But then I also need people to find a like minded scent leadership so that I can have that equally yoked uh, what is it iron sharpens iron dialogue I'm not a junior minister and I don't want to be sucked, you know hooked into celebrity but I know we're going up there and so I need people that are what do you call it like a Joseph to a Mary a Elizabeth to a Mary that makes your spirit jump and that's what I've needed up here because it's been too much Levitical patriarchism or else they're just not you know that in their turf to be they're more Baptist which I like them oh my gosh they're so sweet and so nice and smart but I have to have the right spiritual makeup to get this minister out on land more I really know I'm supposed to do worship I'm needed in worship I'm needed to model a certain thing in the glory in the different things right now I'm teaching on faith our ministry is cross the unity. It's not supposed to be all white, and that's been hard <laughs> to find. That are people that are called, that are not showbiz, or not, you know what I mean, sort of into some doctrines. But we're for that, so I'm no am be led further south when God wants, if he wants it. But right now we're joyful, we're grateful, mother, you know. Uh, I've had a mother, I've been a mother, I don't want to ever be a controlling mother, but I can help people that are younger that have never been through a lot of this process, so maybe you can skip some of this stuff. The tests of faith are just plain old not understanding what the doctrine really means until too late, you know, certain things. But God is good, and it's been like, I know I'm at war, I'm at war not with the people, the government, I'm at war with the religious spirit of the Christian ministry, mostly pioneering and speaking in tongues. That's the war. It's been like, who's over who? Who's done it? It's just been more than I would have ever. And then the occult. The occult in leadership, that has been the biggest. I don't know if it's a miser spirit. I don't know what this is, but it is a huge, powerful principality. Uh, as I've mentioned, not trying to call any attention to anyone's name, but the spirit of religion is really a mixture of ambition, python, constricting and controlling somebody else, witch watching. It is also Leviathan, Job 41. That is a prophetic use of ministry terms because this is the kind of crowd I need, you know, need that are not soaked and hooked in their own LP, whatever that is, Leviathan spirit. So I'm teaching on because we're cross by the unity. We don't just stick with one brand. We go from A to Z, such as Book of Acts, no speaking in tongues, no Holy Spirit, but you know the Lord, and you love the Lord, to all the way where they fall out under the power and they enjoy the Holy Ghost and moving in the Spirit, which I do. But I'm also going to be a balance because I know what it's like to have people treat you rough that are clueless about perception in ministry, that are clueless about being dogmatic. I'm not going to accuse you if you never do. God would never do that. My daddy, who was born again a Southern Baptist, but he wasn't an LP legalist. He wasn't old-timey, old-fashioned. He was really pretty current. And he modeled for me a person who never went after the book of Acts. He loved the Lord. He's a pastor. But he went to a seminary, a training in his Baptist seminary. They said that the book of Acts had stopped when the first apostles chosen and handpicked by Jesus died. So therefore he never went to it. Well, I had gotten on my own, you know, grown up and at college I met the Holy Spirit. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know how great it was, but it was very quiet, calm, peaceable, like it always is to me. And we want to represent it to low-key people like that so they can hear God and test it out to see if they want to go there. You know, really do. 
So then my mom later had a, a miracle, but it was like at a, she had, uh, she was the Baptist preacher's wife, but she and my sister also went toward um, the Holy Spirit later, and they all went to the, up to Rama Training Center and graduated up in Tulsa. Well, as I was called separately, I wasn't under them. I wasn't made like them to do their thing. I was out there called at age 24 to study the body of Christ. And that was way back when, 46 years ago, when all these movements that you now hear of are famous. They all weren't like this. There was no there was no mega ministry that was like it is. There was no media TV. There was It was right after Billy Graham, more like Jesus, People, Vineyard, Servant Leadership. And that's how I really am. That's who I really am. But I also have the vibe where I like to, I have a lot of energy, a lot of rhythm, so I can go full blast, party animal in the spirit, but respectful and mild. I can go black gospel, I can go all kinds of international, I have like that vibe and when I was listening to me, I'm a musician and I speak on this and I also am a CCLI representative for many years, a professional trainer and speaker and a psalmist. But anyway, the Lord is telling I guess I didn't, wasn't going to say that, but it came out because the Lord is telling me even last week, I need to get, people need this, whatever this is, it's going to be. I'm supposed to get it out again. So when I was there, I didn't know what I do to know today about a lot of things. All I wanted was the heart of the Lord. All I wanted was Jesus Christ to let me be used for his glory. And back when I was 18, before I was 24, being sent to study the body of Christ, I had sort of gotten to know the Lord like a Jesus person, down to earth, you know, low-key casual. And all I did was say when I was at college, when I was right at college, when I was like 18, I said, Lord, I'm curious. I don't know what your perfect will for me is in my life or what you want me to be, what you wanted me to major in. That's usually the question of young people. And so I said, I'm just going to experiment with you, Lord. All I want you to do is tell me what you want me to do 24-7. Communicate that, and I will do it 365, which I have ever since. That doesn't mean I sat on a log and did nothing. That means I studied, I was led by the Spirit and the Bible. I had come up not from Pentecost, but from Presbyterian with my mother's side, who were then the Baptists, because my dad and she married, and they went to serve the Lord. It, you know, denominations are not big to me. I don't care. This is supposed to be no denomination. Cross by the unity is, is sort of a... It's to help people build bridges and understand, but not to be under this. You don't have to join this. This is like a, a way of thinking and modeling fruit that says you resemble First Church, but you don't have to be under my authority because we've been around that dead dog too many times that we want to respect everyone's choices, every minister kind, but we know the difference between dominating control, super spiritual, and sin spine. And this is the uh, trying to give a new portrait of fellowship, following Christ without dogma and legalism. So back in the day when I was before this, uh, I'd been raised by a lot of pre uh, people who were Bible scholars. Uh, my grandmother, who was very well read, very smart, she had taught herself Greek and Hebrew back way back when. My mother was a past you know, teacher. And so when we come down on both sides of the family were basic Christians, saved Christians that were the real deal and smart. So all I want to do is see what God wants for me and wants for this and wants for you. And all you want to do is really know what God says to do for you and your ministry, your call in your life. Because that's all that's going to count once we go up to be on the final day when it's too late for everybody to be with the Lord. He's the only big boss that we need to worry about. So as the Lord called me, after I grew up and um, married, it was before children, I heard the Lord in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia area, when I was 24 at church with my husband and a servant leader, and I heard him say to me, Tavo, you to study the body of Christ in leadership. I want you to be males and females, black and white, all colors. Some will be Book of Acts, some will not. I want you to study their doctrines their pet peeves, their red flag buzzwords, their look, 
their music, and then one day I'll help you build bridges of understanding and communication between them, and that's what this is. I didn't know all this other stuff. <laughs> I had no clue about El, you know, Levitical page, the nemesis, the opposite, the Alexander the coppersmith is the super spiritual, whatever that is, whelp. And yet they are greatly revered and respected by myself. I just don't want false doctrine. That's all in this ministry to me. Because it is, I've never, I was never raised around witchcraft or targeting people by their vibe or their look or their style or their gender or their color. I was never, it's not in the Bible. <laughs> Especially not it's under the law, but also under false teaching, back under something wrong. So other than that, we're really pretty joyful, and I am pretty mellow, pretty cheery. But we have to get this out, because we're trying to get it going in a real teaching seminary online and on land, wherever it will end up. We want it to have branches, we want to have a, offices, we want it to be the ministry headquarters, the oracle as they used to say in some parts, the oracle office. I love that. This this person here, who have to be, you know, called a teacher, I had no clue what this that would mean. I remember early on the Lord telling me when I was in Virginia, I had my first child and uh, I started to get this warfare, postpartum depression, all these things and T V ministries had I guess they no, I don't know if they'd started or not then. No, they hadn't. But the idea is that I went to the Lord, thank God I knew to go to the Lord. And it was like he needed to break me, to mold me into back into what he wanted with more faith. And he used what I now call our part of speaking when I address types of faith. Hero types of faith. There are models of faith. And I want to discern and decide that so no one's deceived or takes me wrong that I'm into the, what is the famous, you know, be careful of prosper. No, no, no. We're not, we're going to defrag it in ministry. So all I remember is that when I was at a desperate time of postpartum depression, my father had died suddenly. My grandmother, the prayer warrior, Boo, had died suddenly. And all at the same time, horrible, and I started getting postpartum depression as well as natural things and issues. And I was by myself, nobody in town to give the baby to. And she, who is now wonderful and a good, great person, worth it, she didn't sleep for two years. She was up every two hours. So I was, God was breaking me. He was breaking me. And that's what he did. And so I went to the Lord. But during that time, I came to much encouragement through medium. And I have so many tells, I don't, there's so many things that are so positive, I'd like to say, but I can't fit it all in. So how I understood faith, there are two kinds of faith. In fact, let me say these verses that are on my mind. Jesus said himself, the Messiah, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on this earth? That's what I'm wondering right now. That's what I'm wondering right now about all the depression, suicides, all this stuff going on, Ab accusation. No love in the church dysfunction. In the church is not looking at the world. Looking at and the world, but the church is the center is supposed to be getting it right. So there's it says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Well I want to clarify there are two meanings at least to the word faith. What kind of faith are we talking about? There is the most holy faith which is the process you walk out along the way, the narrow way with the Lord, but there's the saving faith. You invite, ask Jesus into your heart as the Savior. He gives you a free deposit of the Holy Spirit, the book of Acts. You can nurture it, fan it, go for it or not. But he's in there, your guide, guard, comforter, and paraclete, your friend. God is with us, Emmanuel, living inside, free, portable. So there is the granted grace of eternal life, saving faith. And then it's our responsibility, the ball has been placed into our court, so to speak, of what we're going to do with it to develop it and, and grow it. And what do we want to do with it with God's help? You want training, fellowship, you know, the basics. But then there is another kind of view of faith. There is the narrow way, the walking it out, the process, the progress, where there are pitfalls and you rise up and go down and you have to go and go toward the Lord or not. 
you have choices and decisions. So that's one reason he gives you the Holy Spirit to help you with that. That's my field of, of learning and knowing and also helping to encourage. Then we have the other kind, which is I'm going to talk today. Our brand, when you talk about how the Bible works, there is the most holy faith, and there's the kind of faith that has the supernatural power of God teaching of the Holy Spirit, but also just different parts of faith, which is, I call it abiding faith. You're abiding in faith. Why do I say that? Of scripture for us. This is not word of faith, but I was in that for a long time. My, I was not always agreeing with everything, but I was there to understand and then be out in the field studying with many kinds who I agree with and don't agree with. And you wouldn't agree with me. We all get along still. We love them. So when we, I was haven't been in it for a, a long time, 20 years. Or let, you know, I don't know when. I, I don't really care. I love them. I pick. I still listen, but I am very careful because of what has gone on in their midst from out of the rank and file, where I live, where a lot of stuff is really not a okay. So the issue is a lot of is, but a lot of isn't in all of us. So then you have the saving faith by God's grace, free. You have the walking it out through the tests and trials, traumas and healings faith. Then you have the most holy faith, which is our respect for the Lord and the reverential fear of the Lord. And you have the ability to go after and renew your mind and get your faith built up, your most holy faith from the inside out to help you receive your answer to prayer or pray for somebody, heals, you know, get God to use you in his ministry or teach, you know, training. The issue is it takes a lot of energy to do this and it takes a lot of depth and a lot of purification, you know, refining the desires you have your motives for this. And this is what abiding faith has come from. So when I call our group, and if I say this kind of thing in Cross Body Unity, I'm, I'm moving to teach a bit more right now on abiding faith. Well, I've been through the movement to know that I like their joy. Listen, I have their, the joy of the Lord. That's what I like. They're not biased. They're not racist. They treat men and women equally. They're, you know, the, the head people is what I say. Go to the head people. Don't be moved by anything else. And if they're wrong, don't follow them. If I'm wrong, don't follow them. If they're right, follow them. Be careful, everybody. And money is a big deal, so I'm minimizing that. But I'm not putting it down because you have to have cash to live and it may get tougher in the United States God forbid it may be harder you're gonna to need to have some of this up your sleeve so abiding faith is based on my view of it is abiding faith is a verse in the Bible it says now faith is now faith is that means you're really not having faith that pleases God you know it says without faith it's impossible to please God that can mean saving faith, that can mean walking it out faith, that can mean this kind of faith, getting your courage up, your ability to not be moved by situations and have fear, good stuff, but I can't teach it all today. So when you have abiding faith, it's sort of like training, not in the movement, but pass through it, respecting the good qualities, we pull out the good, just like I do any other movement, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, speaking in tongues, charismatic or not, even well, all right, because we're grateful, we're all human, we make mistakes, I just don't, I like these, at least the top people, the top ones, they don't target people, they don't have a pitiful pity party up there, I like that, the top people, I can't vouch for people that you would, you know, any of them, but it pretty much they're cheery, <laughs> but they're also got some good quality, some soundness, if you're careful how you understand it. So abiding faith means it's based on the scripture, now faith is, that unless I have faith, when a shocking incident comes up, an extreme situation, emergency, I won't make it or I won't please God. Not to put you down if you're human and mess up, no, 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 because that comes out of some of this false, that has come from that is perfectionism. Oh no, you're not going to be a perfectionist. 
You have to forgive yourself and get up and do it. And sometimes we misunderstand. We got it wrong. They didn't even say it. I didn't even say it. You didn't even say it. So it's all very careful. That's why I'm very careful, gentle with this. And you don't do it if you don't feel it. Hey, just like the Holy Spirit with me, do it the Lord says. Now faith is. This is how I was thinking to present this. The reason I feel it's important, I feel it's important to have the core teaching, not making you rich, not making you a millionaire, not promising you that, not using formulas, not disrespecting them. I respect them. But I'm careful because of the strangeness that has been coming from that twisting and making money out of it in the last generation. But I will say, if your heart is pure and you have godly contentment and you're not greedy, licentious, arrogant, anything like that, weird and jealous of everybody or trying to show off, if you're not in the if you're not wrong, there's nothing wrong if God tells you to have faith for income, to believe him and he'll show you how and we'll teach on that later. Because it's not wrong. The just shall live by faith. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. All right. However, when I was out in Dallas in the deep south, I met people who took that verse. Not famous ones, but ones that said they were under the famous. <laughs> and they twisted it. And I wrote a book, Adventures in Blame Shifting, because they were you couldn't hold them accountable. They wouldn't be held accountable. They twisted scripture, these little ministers that said they were pastors. God, that was before the wealth <laughs> adventure. So I thought, I wrote on, I think it's called Adventures in Blame Shifting dot WordPress dot com from 2013. I said, the just shall live by faith, yes, but the self justifying used by, live by blame shifting. This, this, the just shall live by faith, that's right, but the avoidant, the self justifying twist in the name of the Lord's scripture, all right, we'll live by avoidant blame shifting. So this is what we do know exists. We have met this and seen it with our own Luke eyewitness we have. So the, we want to not be that. We want to clean this up. We're going to clear this out, talk about it, but not talk to, about them, accuse them, but just say, this goes on and they don't know it. I'm sure they don't know it, probably. So there's nothing wrong with having a need for funding, talk about money. We'll do that later, not today. I'm just letting you know what I believe. All right. So the vocabulary is abiding faith, and it's based on now faith is. Now let me tell you what that means. I was thinking about this. I thought when you have a situation that just pops up, and you're tempted to feel, oh, woe is me. Oh, poor me. I can't make it. I just don't think the world is going to end. The world is going to end. I'll never, and my child will never do, you know. That is when you have to know the Lord and the Bible and know about how to act under that situation without it doesn't get you depressed, oppressed, or kill yourself, you know, unaliving yourself, as they now say, all right. And your children, your teenagers, people that you know. So we're doing this to protect people, to prevent things, to give people some, so your conscience doesn't feel evil if you talk about your faith, having faith for something. It's just how you do it and how wacky you go with it. That's all. <laughs> I mean it. All of us could go with it. God forbid. You know, so we're trying to say, let's clean that slate. Because I've been around in history for this. So, uh, one of the things I know is my dad, who is the most calm, Christ-like loving, just a silent real man of love, he never went into the Holy Spirit. He never did a lot of this adventure in faith. No, he died before that happened, but he believed that the book of Acts didn't happen. So I can always go back because I always, no matter how much I talk about the Holy Spirit and love the Baptist and love the charismatic and love the Holy Spirit and the faith type teaching in part. I'm always thinking of my daddy, the Baptist. I think, thank God he was normal. <laughs> it's nice to have so normal. It is. I'll be honest. He had joy too. 
but it was like, ah, I keep, see, this is it. No movement is perfect, and no movement is all evil unless it doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is the only way, basically. Or it's very licentious and corrupt. Any other thing. So I'm looking and thinking, Cross by the Unit is to teach people how to be responsible, to hear God and not go off, and not go. And I'm warning people about some things, and I'm telling you, hey, I am not a charismatic. In 2012, in Dallas, Fort Worth, I quit. The Lord said, you get out. Too much false witness in there. Too much flaky playtime. It was just big boss, witch watching. It was just not my style. And the Lord said, get out. So I did. Ha. Cross crowd of unity. Now, I've had, I had a lot of dysfunctional, really a strong attack that was mean in my life in the last 25 years. It has stopped me from getting out when I needed to go out more to publicize, and I lost a lot of things. But that's okay. That's okay. A lot of people lost things. But I did have a revelation, a time of visitation in 1995, when the Lord had given me the International Fellowship of Foundational Ministries, which is based on Ephesians 4, Ephesians 2, 19 and 20, that the office that the church, the church itself, is built on the offices, the teaching of the prophet and the apostle, with the Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. So I got the IFFM out of that, and I, when I get helpers, or the time is right, a staff, I would like to get that up and honor that, because I actually had a nonprofit, literally, in Dallas, but when I went through the dysfunction of really mean ministry, and saw the poor witness to a lot of this hoopla that was TV affected basically, I put that down as a prophetic act and we've just been living like whatever since, doesn't matter. Because it's not about, it's about being born again first, treating people with respect second, being faithful to those you love and faithful to be a witness of the Lord and then letting the Lord lead you to what deposit he has for you to share with people. But it's not about being famous or making it big or posturing to get your way. That's what I quit. So I think of, even though I may talk, like I've talked and focused on wealth. You know, Western European Levitical Patriarch is a shepherding movement that's gone dark. I've done that a lot, and I will again. But I feel it's time also to bring out something encouragement for the nation, for the body of Christ, for people who have never been heard anything but complaining and attacking and all those people making YouTube videos with thousands of people, tabloid videos, making money off of accusing fellow Christians. That really bugs me. It really does. So I'm throwing it down, but I'm not accusing you or them by name. I'm not putting your name up there or theirs. Because it's not doing anything except making more cynics. More people grow to distrust Christians and ministers. It's doing nothing except making them video monetize money by demonizing a fellow Christian, in my opinion. Have they even talked to them? Malachi, I mean, Matthew 18, 15, Galatians 6, 1, 1 to 1 privately confronted them. I want to know. So we've seen so many things, too many things that are toxic, dysfunctional, that are suspicious. And we could all be suspicious, but we want to work on each of our own self and start afresh. And cross by the unity is a way, an option. Not that I have to be, it's not a one world church, no. Tavo is not over everybody, no. You can't be under me, no. You can represent it by your fruit equal opportunity, real respect for the office of the human made in God's image, cross-racial, you see a person first, not a stereotype, it's not about getting money in, it's about hearing God and doing what he says to get the amount he needs you to have and tells you to go for, no matter what it is. You know, my Bible is filled with good things, but it doesn't need to be back under the law, big bossed around, or criticized, or evil-eyed. It doesn't. So with all these things from different movements I'm letting, you know, speaking about, complaining about, it's because we want the body of Christ to be at unity, trusting each other.
Crossbody Unity Book of Ephesians. Look it up on crossbodyunity.com. I'm still figuring it out. There's so much I have I want to do, but so little helper that I can only do what I can do. And God is in it. So we're not trying to make our name for ourselves. That's what the low class, the low class charismatic always wants to think. The witch watcher included. She's just trying to make a name for herself. She's good. No. Listen, I learned this in Dallas. There's such a thing. Now let's teach these people. There's such a thing as being contentious. It's mark them. They're contentious, causing division. No. We're the ones trying to bring unity. I'm saying there's a difference between contention, complaining, and being up front, faithful to the wounds of a friend, Proverbs 26, 7, which is this. But it's also, there's a difference in contending with the faith, for the faith in Jude, that's what this is. The most holy faith is in jeopardy, it's being demonized because of the broadcasting media. And then there's no sound teaching, no grassroots foot on the ground, plain speaking about all this hoopla and famous stuff going on <laughs> in the, basically the tongue-talking world, charismatica. Like I said, we are wanting for the everyone to stand up and teach. <laughs> I had to get out to feel so much joy, let me tell you. <laughs> we want everyone to hear God and politely, respectfully, not rudely, stand up and teach. We really do. If you have a question or need me to help you clear up your theology and clean it up, let me know. Just make an appointment. We'll do it online or on land. That's fine. But we think, I think, the day of the self-important minister is over and the self-important Christian. That is Demas and Eli gone around. Too much of that. So we're going to just be ourselves, whatever this is, whatever you think, dressed in this earth suit for the mission, just like you are. And, you know, the Bible says that God has his peculiar people. Hey, just enjoy it. Just be yourself. One thing I like to do is get into big worship. I like to steep in the worship. I really do. But the issue is if you go too many places now, they've got so much wealth in there, you'll be scanned and defiled showing up in their property. <laughs> That's why I need my oath. <laughs> Will the Son of Man come and find faith on the earth? Or faking it till you make it? Will the Son of Man come and find faith on the earth? Or will he find people pleasing and posturing to get what they want? That's what I want to know. The just shall live by faith, or the just shall corner you, try to use you you under their power and their ministry to milk you for what you were. I don't know. Excuse me, I shouldn't say that. So we've been out in the grassroots dysfunction too long where it's talking, and it's not now. Listen, Charlotte, thank you. You were loved, Charlotte. You were very loved. The people up here before I got here, see, I was in Virginia before, Dallas, and I would come down to Charlotte to go to conferences. And when I came down over Charlotte, I happened to meet people that were prayer people, prayed for the area. And they were involved in prayer movements in North Carolina. And when I crossed the border, I could tell a difference of the spiritual quality. So then I went to Dallas, 15 toxic ministry years. Toxic. Now, I like the gym. I like Dallas. I like Texas. I like, I think, big. The bright blue sky, great gyms. But, good barista fellowships. But, no no heart for love, no love, just progress. So then I realized, what in the world, as a prophet seer like Daniel, like, oh, like you know, whatever, what in the world has gone on here that the spirit realm of that area, the region, is that bad, that warlike, that wearing, that toxic, poverty spirit? What is it? It was like... Daniel, it was like somewhere, they're in denial of this. They're in denial, born-again Egyptians living in denial of this. So I can tell as a prophet, a mature prophet. So then I got, as the Lord finally, after 15 years of hard time, allowed me 
to escape, and he moved me, he said, go up here to Charlotte, where I knew it was nice, pleasant, in the spirit. So I come up, and when I've been up here, it's like, wow, what a difference. It's taken me two and a half years to unwind after the last leg of the journey. The, the dysfunction. It's a, you know, there's something about your emotions, your spirit, your psyche, when you're around controlling, dogmatic, targeting, occult, wrong ministry, dysfunction. Because you're tender-hearted, you're kind, you're compassionate. So when I come up here, I went, wow, I can feel a difference. And I knew who's up here. They've already, these people have prayed through in the churches, not just one, but they did it and cleaned up whatever it is. They're repented and gotten in unity, many, many. I don't know who they are, but I met a lot of them that are quality. So when I'm up here, I'm on a holiday. It's been a foreign, after decades and decades of the wrong atmosphere, I think, man, I'm on a, I'm allowed God's mercy to live here for a while, for a few weeks longer, whatever he's saying to do. Because I am a prophet, and I am mature, and I know what goes on in the powers and principalities, whatever. And it doesn't bother me, but it makes it more your quality of life so much more happy. So the issue is when you're not famous, it's really pretty tough because they don't think big. There's not a lot of faith in many of them. I'm not putting that down. Let me talk about this non-famousness. Which is, we're happy. Listen, I'm so happy being non famous. I, I really am. I believe that everybody should be whatever you're supposed to be. There is such a thing as renown, which is okay in the Bible. To have influence and renown is fine. It's like famous, but it's not celebrity. PC, peacekeeping celebrity. So when I was riding along yesterday, I got the word Nathan the prophet. And I knew what that meant, because in two times that God has shown me himself, he specifically shown me himself, when I wasn't thinking about it, there are two times that are big times when God called a no-name prophet, a person who wasn't even officially a prophet, to give them the word of the Lord for the nation. There are two times. One is Eli and the good old boys will be boys ministry he sent a no-name non-famous prophet to tell them Eli you and your move is history you're dysfunctional you're targeting you're using you are womanizing what minimizing females misogynist targeting the lone woman Hannah on the steps you're discerning is gone and it's about your offerings and he sent a no name if you read the chapter an unfamous no nameless faceless prophet came out of the word work and gave the word of the Lord to Eli that you're gone Ichabod the Lord has departed from you the glory of the Lord has departed and you're out of here and they died okay gosh the second one is Nathan oh excuse me Amos I meant to say Amos so Nathan is a good teaching point too, though. but Amos was the other no-name faceless prophet. When you read the book of Amos, which God had me read a few months ago, I found out that the history of Amos, that he was not a prophet. He just worked in the fields, and he was like in farm and fields and fruits and all these things. And then God needed, he was desperate to find somebody who would give the word of the Lord to the nation and he called up Amos. And that was, if you read Amos and Eli, they're like today, a lot like today, and it's complex. So God can raise up anybody he wants to now as the word of the Lord, a beacon, should that person feel the call to do so. So whoever's got it, go for it. Let's all go for it if we got it, all right? Why? Because the word of the Lord was despised. The offering with the Lord was despised in Eli's day, and that's why I'm trying to teach really my reason for demystifying, defragging all this prosperity hoopla, you know, the, what they say about it. I'm trying to bring it down what it really is supposed to be and was and can be in the future because we need a balance. We need a harvest coming in. You need to not have the offering of the Lord despised in this day, which it has the Jimmy Swaggart scandals and Jim Baker scandals, in my opinion. It is my opinion. 
So we're looking for a future church with hope. Will we find faith on the earth? That means the quality faith, not hyper faith, not spooky faith, not controlling faith, not materialistic faith, not pontificating faith. We want to find what is faith. And that can be anybody who doesn't even want the Holy Spirit, that they're Christian. It can be black, white, or brown. It can be anybody who doesn't think. I don't really feel good about even thinking about money for faith, faith for money at all. That's fine. We might want you more. Right? So we're not for that. We're not against that. We're just against strangeness, dysfunction, and really using the name of the Lord in vain, vanity, to get what you want. Using the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We're really it. We want holy fear of the Lord, respect, and not bias against people who do teach on faith or don't, or teach on miracles or don't, or teach if they're black or white or don't. We want to have the Lord. So Nathan, if I'm correct, Nathan was the Israelite that Jesus saw coming. Now Jesus was a prophet, so he had the prophetic seer ability. So he could discern Nathan from far away, and when he came up, he had perceived Nathan by his character, not his look. He wasn't a good old boy, all right? So he perceived Nathan by his spirit, and he said, oh look, there's Nathan, an Israelite who there is no guile. That means he didn't have any secret hidden issues. He wasn't in lust. He wasn't in sin. He wasn't in ego. He wasn't in vanity, pride, false doctrine, witchcraft, accusing, maligning. There's a lot of things. I don't know what Jesus would think, but he said he was impressed. I guess he was probably shocked. Oh, look, there's an Israelite, <laughs> there's an Israelite that has no guile, no guilt streak. Right, so what we want, we don't want to be perfect. We know we're human. But we don't want to look for flaws and evil on everybody because they remind me of your mother or their father or they have blonde hair or just because you got a mean streak. Just because you got an LP legalist mean streak from way back and you're one of the henchmen of the people who look for Jezebels at every turn. <laughs> we want to minimize all this law. <laughs> finger point. Why? Why do you want to go? You don't have to. Good news. You lucked out. Paul says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, if they're dysfunctional, dysfunctional accusers and toxic, untrustworthy backbiters and full of themselves in their ministry, please turn away, flee from them, and you shall, and I have. This is where we're we're perceptively throwing down the gauntlet for good teaching. We want good teaching. We really do. Now, one of the things I haven't had is a lot of prayer people. I need more prayer people. I have gotten I had so much H on earth getting this victory, which I am in a great victory. I really am solidly in a victory. But it was like an <sighs> to try to throw me down that I did blossom. And I need to get my, I want prayer protection. And I want the right people sent, only the right ones, or else I am sent somewhere else. Doesn't matter. We are so grateful. Listen, when you don't know exactly how to do what you're doing, and the Lord leads you, He hangs out with you, and you hang out with Him. It is fun. It is more fun than having somebody there who might be dysfunctional, complaining, murmuring, style it around, not really caring what they do. So better to have the Lord, follow, I mean the Lord is so, and then I know a lot of people, I really do have, I have a lot of people I can chat with and get along with, you know what I mean? But if they're not, you know, if they don't know the Lord or they're not saved, you can't use them in the ministry and stuff. But on the other hand, we're just one more learning curve The just shall live by faith. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. I find that really a lot of the teaching, you know, when you have a problem, the issue is, you say, is it me causing it? Is it the world, the flesh, or the devil? Whatever it is, then Lord, what do you say? How do you want it done? Do you want to go, in? go out and do this? Go out and do that? Stay at home and pray fast? Get help, prayer, whatever? 
do things differently, get new ideas, and I'm always open to new ideas. So what I did was, it was like this time, you know, years ago through the years when I was learning about faith and the Bible and how the Word of God works, and before it got polluted, then not by the top, I'm seeing what happened in America on media and the people from you know, the descending persons. So I thought, Lord, you know, there was, certain, there was one time in the day, I remember deliverance ministries. Well, there was a day where you renew your mind, you bind Satan, you cast out devils. But after a while, you can't do that. That isn't how you want to live. <laughs> I knew that went right. Because you lose your joy. You're always looking for the wrong thing. You're looking for flaws. I think that's what the wealth must have stayed in from the 80s. <laughs> Still looking for that last... I can't do that. We've overcome. We've overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and love not our life. And the Lord has died on the cross to pay for our victory, healing, all sorts of things, deliverance. We don't need to always dark devil spy. I mean, really, that hurts people. It hurts people. So these are parts of the doctrines we've uncovered. And we've been delivered from. <laughs> no, no, I believe in it. In balance. It's see the thing is balance. People lose their balance. They're always looking for the devil. They have no joy. They're scowling. You know. Same with faith. Same with prophecy. Same with anything. Health, food, anything else. You can take it too far, and we've seen that, <laughs> and don't want to do. We're trying not to. So let's just go back and think it through again. Let's all forgive. Make a list of everybody, everybody who Jesus died for that you have ought against. They didn't know as much as they know now, hopefully. You didn't know how much you know now. Let's all start again and forgive every movement, every person, even yourself. And many of us have taken up the cross. This is a movement where you carry the cross. You know, just take up your cross daily. We're not forgetting that. We just don't have time in this tape to say it all, cover all the bases. But we thought it through. We really have. So that's why I need more prayer power, a prayer team, so that Tabo, Dr. T, does not miss anything by mistake because she's got a lot. But we want to honor the fathers and mothers of the last moves of God before this one and before yours, all right? We honor them. They're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Thank God we can all be unperfect together. Only Jesus is perfect. So we honor them. That doesn't mean we, and we respect them, but that doesn't mean we have to believe exactly the same way or do some of the things that we really knew were not exactly correct, and that's how I can do it. So over here, I'm submitting, because I know that fact in my own principle, is that we're human, just like Paul said, follow me only as I follow Christ. He knew he was human. Then we want to say to you, we're submitting all our thoughts, teachings as selahs to the body of Christ. Selah means pause and think of it. Pick out the hay from the stubble. That's a Kenneth Hagin Sr. comment statement. Pick out what's hay, throw out what's stubble. That's right. Keep what you feel God says is really in the Bible. Find it in the Bible, test everything to see if what we say is so. Paul liked that. He did it with his own teaching and the noble Bereans. I caution you because I do not want to be minimized by the law, the book of the law that these people that say they're Christian, the hip Christians, use. <laughs> I'm not under the law. I think it's really odd because I never grew up. My daddy was so peaceful, but such a respecter of equal opportunity, real respect, races and women, anybody. Nobody in my family said, Tavo, you should not do anything for the Lord. No, no. No one said that. No one thought. Most people don't. So imagine my surprise. I get in the Holy Spirit, Book of Acts crowd, and I'm always, you're a little woman. You're you know, out of order. You look too. You look too. That's okay. 
we only grew up because of you. We only grew up more and more free. I realized my daddy is right here and a lot of good people that are not, you know, like my daddy, Christians and the Lord himself. I have got Bible scripture that proves most of this is old LP American thinking. It really is LP, the medical patriarch, that type of thing. So we are pro-humans, pro-movements. We just don't want to be legalistically characterized and also the unloving, no love, no respect in those movements, certain ones. So therefore we're just teaching around them. That's why God has given me. See, I wasn't raised as a women. I didn't, when women's lib came along, I didn't ever feel, I thought, why? I used to think, I before Dallas, I used to think, why? Because I wasn't raised harmed by men. I wasn't raised with any misogyny from my father. I was raised cherished, loved, respected by all the men in the family. They were not racist either. Everywhere I went, I was respected until <laughs> I stumbled upon the LP movements. That's the only time when I realized how vast those training movements are, how many females, and then you see that it also is in fundamentalists that are evangelicals a lot, not all. I didn't realize God was showing me this to teach on it, to train on it, to get rid of it, to get it out of the teaching of the Christian ministry. It is divisive, but it's abusive. It is demonic. It's like racism except to women. Misogynist. And I can teach backwards and forwards on males and females, chain of command, authority. That's my call, government. And then I can also teach witches, Jezebels and all that because of charismatics. I got it down. Church of Thyatira, why do you tolerate that controlling LP spirit of demonic Jezebel form? I don't. I teach against it. So we're happy. We're really happy. We're trying to be pure heart. But we're not going to be, we're fed up with dysfunction. We're fed up with dysfunction. In ministry and Christianity, that is in especially the Book of Acts, turf, is, that is my turf. Okay. If I have one more evil eye from some sharpshooter over there in the LP movement, the whelm, one more, well, this is supposed to be a family, a community in Christ, Ephesians 4, and they can't tell a witch, a Jezebel from an Elijah sitting in their office, they're goofy, just goofy, they're full of it, they're full of false teaching. Why? Because I know why. I got the scripture. Read Isaiah 11, 2 and 3. Jesus Christ, who is the prophet, seer of all times, magnified. He had all the gifts of the Spirit, all God's seven spirits, the spirit of counsel, might, power, understanding, spirit of the Lord, fear of the Lord. And it said it made him so sharp of understanding, sharp of discernment, sharp of understanding, but he would not judge, accuse or judge by the sight of his eyes or make decisions based on what he heard. LP, you got a little work to do in your ministry. Yes. You really do. So we are for the, for the prophets, for the offices, for the pe people who speak in tongues that don't. We're for red state, purple state, blue state, whatever state you are. We're just not for dogma shouting people down. We're just not for dogma. We're do for letting people hear God for themselves with regional, rational, one foot on the ground relationship, ever mindful respect. And this is a, I guess it's a movement, calling them out, calling out the beloved to be who you're supposed to be over there, wherever you are. You hear God and you hear the Bible and then act accordingly, not being Pharisee, PC, suspicious, or surreptitious. How about that? But God is good. His mercy endures. I feel like that maybe God sent me to Charlotte. I really like this area. I like the people. I really like the people in this area. He sent me to this really nice atmosphere in the spirit and nice, really nicer people to give me a little vacation 
I think he gave me a really a blessed, blessed vacation. The people are, to me, in general, their hearts are emotionally mature. And I'm talking about Christians and not basic, basic common people. Now, I don't want to advertise it too much. They'll all move down here. <laughs> forgot about that. But they are. They are. So we're grateful, but where the Lord leads me, I believe He will lead. He's leading me somewhere out of the first year deeper south. So I gotta know my turf to go deeper south, because they're even more <laughs> in the occult. And they're even more wilder than I really want to go to. <laughs> if you go to that deeper south, way deep south from here. You got a lot more on your hand. You got a lot more in the spiritual realm than you really want to have. That's my opinion because I used to travel down there a lot on Sydney. On the other hand, we're going to do whatever God says. It will be fine. I will say at least, but I get a break up here for a while. I, you know, what I, I think what I've got, it's not a lot of faith up here. Christian cares about, you know, there is, but I haven't been, I've only been here two years. But there's a lot more fear of the Lord up here. Maybe this is it. There is a basic decent in the population, a calmness, a caring, good neighbor. It's good neighbor and a good, like fear of the Lord. It's not as achievement scurrying and, you know, I'm sure it is in parts I've never met. But let me say that God allowed me the grace to live here and take off from the dysfunction of the last 15 years, 20 years of my life with Big Boss, with Big Boss. It isn't a lot of Big Boss unless you go toward a wealth community and you can avoid them now, you can. So God is good as mercy is enduring toward me and toward you. But if you would like to visit, if you would like to chat, if you'd like to dialogue, process, inquire, then let me know. And we are here in the Charlotte area, and we do like to do fun things as well. But we want to encourage you, and I believe it's through networking. The only thing I really want is not ownership of people, anybody. I don't want to be covering for anybody because I'm a Galatians 1, 1, and 5, not sent out, not under anybody on purpose, just because of what I've been through, controlling false religion and false teaching and authority. This is Galatians 1, 1, and 2, not sent out by any one person, any one group. I and the brothers and sisters who are with me collaborating out in the field. That's how we want it. It's a divine appointment network, seers included, and Christians, Christian leaders, yes. Like I said, I'm not the big boss, but I will not, I have to be really careful. I will not stand for any more of this arrogant big bosses, big eye stuff. No, no. I'll rise up. But we're very cross political. We are not political on purpose. I hang out at the Barista Fellowship with liberals. Man, we get along great. I get along with left coast people. Let me tell you, Dallas, when I'd meet, I was from the East Coast, I'd be like homesick. I thought, I can't find anybody so dysfunctional. Where, where do I even relate to anybody except the gym? Good quality people. And there I'd meet a left coast person once in a while, rarely, or another nation, or a black person. <laughs> and I'd be, oh, home week. Oh, yeah, really nice. Oh, yeah. So same thing here. I could be out there and I bump into somebody, we chat. It's like, oh, yeah, they're from the left coast. We get along. I don't think small. I don't think narrow. I think apolitical, cross political. Let's find our commonalities. That's what I do. So you have your right to think like you want to think with me. I prefer somebody who's at least the, who is forthright is on fire for their cause or causes they're passionate they're hot for what they believe than some lukewarm pc mealy mouth mush mouth christian any day i really do so now that we're scared everybody no no you all are so brave and you are walking by faith not by sight and you realize that the just shall walk by faith, because the Bible says so. 
not by being weird, not by being rude, bossy, thinking everything's your cash cow, or that you're the king or the queen. You're going to be yourself, but you're going to be the real deal, on and off the stage, on and off the stage. <laughs> So the Lord allowed me to, <laughs> to fester from the masses of Dallas. <laughs> I had to get cleansed and healed from the PTSD of Dallas Fort Worth charismatic population. Uh, even though I wasn't one, you know them, you know, you have some of their, I know the Holy Spirit. But God is good, His mercy endures, so if you need to ask a question, write me at, at um, tavoleaderus at gmail.com. That is our threefold cord, threefold email that shall never be broken. <laughs> the threefold email is tavoleaderus at gmail.com. That is for correspondence, asking questions. It is for donating through... PayPal, the email PayPal is that, and Zell PayPal. I mean, Zell, Zell is that. So those three, whatever you feel the Lord says, to sow into this, to feed the crossbody unity movement, go right ahead as the Lord allows. God is good. His mercy endures. You know what? I don't think in the Bible that I could find anywhere that Jesus said, Jesus was never quoted, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I don't read where he ever said, will the Son of, when the Son of Man comes, will he find Jezebels on the earth? Will he find witch watching on the earth? No. I, will he find grandiose displays and offering taking on the earth? No, he did not. He said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in his goodness, his kindness, his love, his eternal life blessing, as well as his provision or whatever else it is, his goodness, the faith that he exists, that he's there for us, that he really wants us and loves us. Will we find this kind of faith? I don't know. It looks pretty hopeless unless you start teaching it yourself. God bless you. He loves you. This is Tabo DRC signing off for now.